Today's topic is the anti-slavery movement, also known as the abolitionist movement. Our essential question is, in what ways did people protest slavery in the early 1800s? Obviously, uh, people had been against slavery in the United States since before it was even a country. Um, whenever the first African slaves were brought over in 1619, um, that's really when resistance began. Obviously, those enslaved within the institution uh, had never been fans of the institution. But there are also groups like the Quakers, who had been against slavery from the 1600s. However, in the early 1800s, in the decades prior to the Civil War, this movement really began to pick up steam. So whenever we talk about the abolitionist movement, that means abolishing or getting rid of slavery. By 1830, there were around 2 million slaves in the United States. Most of these slaves worked on cotton plantations in the South, but there were still some instances of slavery um, lingering in the North. In the South, um, most enslaved people did <clears throat> endure brutal work routines, um, beatings, being separated from their family was a very commonplace occurrence. Um, pretty much whenever <clears throat> slaves had children, they expected that one day they would be separated from those children. In many cases, the basics of survival were barely provided to those that were enslaved. Um, enslaved people resisted bondage in several different ways. Um, some were more subtle, such as breaking tools that um, <clears throat> the owners of the plantations would have to pay to uh, fix or replace. They would release livestock, um, purposely like destroy crops, and in the most extreme case, escaping from bondage, um, which obviously was a very risky endeavor. Most of us have heard about the Underground Railroad, which we know was not an actual railroad. Um, it was a network of secret routes and safe houses used by slaves to escape from the South to free states in the North or even to Canada. Um, so someone who was escaping um, slavery in the South, they would be led to uh, these safe houses where they would stay for you know, a period of a couple of days or a week until they moved on to the next safe house. Uh, obviously, a very risky endeavor. Most had to travel by night as to not be found out. Um, we are also, most of us, familiar with Harriet Tubman, who escaped from slavery in 1849 um, and then helped hundreds of uh, slaves to their freedom in the North. Denmark Vesey was a free man. In 1822, he attempted to organize a slave rebellion in Charleston, South Carolina. Uh, as many as 9,000 people were involved in this plot. Obviously, not easy to keep that a secret. Uh, so, the slave rebellion was found out before it could be carried out. Um, and Vesey, as well as 46 others who were um, suspected of being part of um, this plot were hanged and executed. Today there is a statue to Denmark Vesey in Charleston, South Carolina. In the early 1800s, uh, the man pictured to the right, David Walker, um, published a pamphlet that attacks slavery. He was a free African-American who was born in Wilmington, North Carolina, um, but later moved up north to Boston. It was in Boston that he published this pamphlet um, called David Walker's Appeal. So this pamphlet was very radical. It called for blacks all over the United States um, to come together to resist racism and slavery. It encouraged slaves to rise up against their masters um, in order to get rid of the institution of slavery. And it was considered very, very radical. Um, even most abolitionists 
did not agree with the viewpoints in David Walker's appeal. The book was banned in the South, but as you know, if someone tells you not to do something, it makes you want to do it. So despite being banned and having like laws against this pamphlet, um, people still read it. It was highly read in the North as well. And people were so afraid of what this pamphlet taught that the state of Georgia offered um, thousands of dollars for someone to kill David Walker. David Walker did die a few years after publishing this pamphlet because of um, the threats against his life. Many people believed he was poisoned, but more likely he died of natural causes, probably tuberculosis. What people feared most about David Walker's appeal uh, was that slaves would begin to rise up and attack um, slave owners, which is exactly what happened in Nat Turner's rebellion. So Nat Turner was a slave um, that lived in <clears throat> Virginia, and Nat Turner had received visions all of his life. He was very intelligent, had learned how to read and write at a very young age. Um, and in 1831, he believed that he had been given a sign from God to lead his people to freedom. So he organized a slave rebellion um, that was carried out in August of 1831. He and his followers killed accounts vary anywhere from 55 to 75 people before being captured. Um, as him and his followers went around to plantations, um, releasing other enslaved people, uh, they killed pretty much anyone that they came in contact to. Um, so of the 75 possible people that uh, Nat Turner and his followers killed, many of them were women and children. So obviously this was every Southerner's worst nightmare come true. Um, the rebellion is eventually put down in a couple of days. Uh, estimates also vary on the amount of black people who lost their lives due to Nat Turner's rebellion, um, but it was many more than the white people who were killed. Um, in the aftermath, the frenzy that followed Nat Turner's rebellion, many black people were being killed um, simply you know, for being black. Many of them had no direct ties to Nat Turner's rebellion, um, but suffered the consequences anyways. The long-term effects of Nat Turner's rebellion is that more restrictions were placed on both freedmen in the United States and on enslaved people. This is when it became, began, oh, became illegal to teach slaves how to read or write. Uh, slaves could not gather in large groups without also having a white person present. Uh, so we really begin to restrict um, enslaved people's rights even more because of this fear of other uprisings. William Lloyd Garrison was a very outspoken abolitionist. He began publishing uh, The Liberator, which was the most famous anti-slavery newspaper in the United States uh, in 1831, the same year as Nat Turner's Rebellion. The Liberator made the arguments that slavery was morally wrong and there should be immediate emancipation. Emancipation means freeing of the slaves in the United States. So <clears throat> many northern states had pass laws for gradual emancipation that would happen over the course of decades. But many of the more radical abolitionists like William Lloyd Garrison wanted that to happen immediately. Because William Lloyd Garrison was so outspoken and so radical, there were many threats against his life um, throughout the abolitionist movement. Sarah and Angelina Grimke were sisters that had grown up on a plantation in South Carolina 
um, but they themselves were Quaker abolitionists. So as they grew older and began their public life, they both wrote and spoke out against slavery and together established a school for African-American girls. And possibly the most well-known figure of the abolitionist movement is Frederick Douglass. Uh, Douglass was a former slave who had been taught how to read and write. Uh, so once he escaped to his freedom, um, he began to speak and write about his experiences as a slave. Um, he actually penned an autobiography called The Narrative of the life of Frederick Douglass, um, a book that is still accessible to you today. If you are interested in reading it, go to Barnes & Noble, buy you a copy, go to the library, check it out. Um, Frederick tells of his life and experiences um, as a slave and argues about why slavery should come to an end in the United States. Uh, over here on the right is one of my favorite quotes from this time period. Frederick Douglass says, I expose slavery in this country because to expose it is to kill it. Slavery is one of those monsters of darkness to whom light, whom the light of truth is death. All right. So if you just bring slavery into the light, expose all of the bad things about it, um, Eventually, you'll have enough people fighting to get rid of that institution. <sighs> Obviously, for us today, it's easy to see that slavery was morally wrong, should have never existed. Um, so in order to understand why there was such fierce opposition against it, you have to understand the viewpoint of um, the Southerners. Who relied upon slavery um, to make a living. So the argument for slavery from Southerners was that slavery was necessary because of the agricultural system of the region. Uh, slavery was the backbone of the economy in the South. But they also argued that it benefited the North as well, which it did. The textile mills that relied on Southern cotton also benefited from the free labor. So basically, the entire economic system of the United States revolved around, was based on slavery. And we know, because it's the same in today's society, that money rules everything. They also claimed that Christianity supported slavery. Um, they pointed to instances of slavery in the Bible, um, and use that to say that it was okay, and also made the arguments that slave, slaves could not survive without the owners, um, that the owners took care of them and provided uh, the basics of survival, and that African Americans would not be able to live on their own. Obviously, not a true statement, but something that was um, perpetuated by those in the South. If you're wondering what the federal government was doing in order to, um, in order to address this conflict over slavery, they were doing absolutely nothing. In 1836, Congress passed the gag rule, which prohibited debate, debate regarding slavery. So literally, slavery could not be a topic of debate in Congress. And they renewed this rule every single year for eight years. All right. So for a long time in this nation, uh, while two sides are going further and further apart on their opinions on slavery, we have the federal government doing nothing to address it. Obviously, we know that this issue will come to a head in 1861 with the start of the Civil War. 